Gentlemen, hey, congratulations on your new film, Love Virtual. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a, such a such a fun film. It's a, an entire world that you just created. But uh, we have to hear it first is uh, where the original idea came from for Love Virtually. The original idea uh, came from an amalgamation of um, news headlines and um, and the reality that we were living in at the very beginning of COVID, where everything switched to a digital medium and, and everyone was on Zoom and, and, uh, and separated. And um, I really wanted to shoot a movie around that time period. And Cheston and I had kind of been throwing ideas out, uh, it, you know, for, for doing something. And we were severely limited in what we could actually shoot during the very beginning of the pandemic. And we're like, all right, we need to write something where we, we don't have um, more than two people in any given scene that's, you know, interesting, entertaining, uh, and, you know, that we can, we can shoot safely. And, uh, and that's, that's where the ideas, that's where the four different sort of um, couple storylines originated from was, was, was people navigating love in a digital world. <laughs> and, and for a moment, I kept on thinking that you guys like um, watched uh, Love Actually uh, too, too many times or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> You know, that's funny. I've actually, I'm going to make, this is a big admission. I've never actually watched Love Actually. Oh, really? <laughs> now, you know, Ellie's seen it, Ellie, you know, but I, I never saw it. We, you know, and originally that wasn't even the, the name of our movie. That actually was sort of like the third iteration. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it's one of those things that kind of happened organically. It started with one of these stories and then we, you know, it really, I think the first story that we came up with was really the sandbagging story because we just thought, you know, it's ironic, this idea that you have so many people like catfishing out there. What if people who were famous did a reverse catfish in order to avoid whatever their bad press was? And I think, you know, and then it just kind of became more ridiculous and more ridiculous as, as we, you know, kind of thought of what are the things that people, you know, what are the things that people encounter when you stop interacting in, in, in person? And you don't really know who you're dealing with or, or, or you know, people kind of lose touch with, the kind of connectivity that we normally got used to. And that was very real and present at that point in time. So, so the entire point of uh, the, this film is just to show the ridiculousness of uh, the disconnect that we have on a uh, society, you know, with our electronics, right? I say it's a big part of it. I mean, look, it's satire. Satire is you're holding up a mirror to the world and society and showing how ridiculous things are. You know, there's also layers that's commentary on the media and commentary on popular culture. And who is it that we, you know, who is it that we seem to value? And, and how do we, you know, how do people sort of judge other people? And, and, and what are, so all those things are layered within it. But I think, you know, all of it is really brought to the surface in the, the new ways and not only which people are interacting now, but sort of we anticipated, well, you know, at that time it was just about Zoom. And Meta, you know, Facebook was still called Facebook. It wasn't called Meta Platforms. We sort of, you know, happened to catch a wave at a time um, that we were already well into this movie by the time that sort of became the the what people were talking about. Now you mentioned that this uh, this this basically birthed out of the uh, pandemic. Um, at which point of the pandemic did you really start filming, and did you really have to only have like very very small crew? in this case it was october of 2020 so it was a few months in but we, we started writing the movie like a couple weeks into the pandemic when we were both like all right this this might be a while <laughs> let's uh let's strap in and and it started off as just writing something to keep us busy because we didn't have a whole lot else to do at the time and uh and then it was like well i, I think we can maybe just we can kind of just shoot this ourselves and uh and it really grew from that. But yeah, it was October 2020 was, was uh, when we started shooting. Yeah, production was down by 50%. SAG rules required testing for certain people three times a week, other people on the test on the, on the set twice a week. We really did have to have a pretty skeleton crew, relatively speaking. But you know, given the fact we didn't have a huge budget, that sort of suited what we were doing. 
Um, but, uh, you know, at any moment we were under the risk of someone's going to test positive and we're going to be shut down and it's going to be a catastrophic loss for a project of this size. So it was quite an intense and, and vulnerable experience to be on a set like that. And yeah, could we have had more than two people in a room? I mean, there's a few scenes that we shot a year and a half later that did have that obviously, but at that time we could have, but the risk factor was, you know, we were mitigating the risk by doing it the way we did it. Well, you, you, you have, you have to love the fact that you shot a pandemic movie during the pandemic, literally yeah. about the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Now I mean, we're uh, hoping that it, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, we're hoping that, it, you know, this isn't seen as a movie about the pandemic, but rather a movie set in the pandemic. Um, because the reality is it's, it's really about something that, that is, you know, beyond just that period of time. But that's ultimately, you know, what was going on. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't get put, you know, compartmentalized and, oh, this is a movie about just the pandemic. What, what, was it tough for you guys to, uh, you know, um, gather your cast and, um, you know, to recruit uh, actors into your, into your film? Yes and no. I mean, it was a pretty extensive casting um, period. We went out to a lot of people. Um, what we had going for us was that we had a lot of people that weren't working. You know, there were a lot of people sitting at home. Um, so we did get, you know, there were definitely people we got that we... I don't think would have been able to get otherwise. Um, yeah, it was, it was a very, um, it was a very intense process of trying to just curate for the roles because everybody was written with such a specific voice. So it was a lot of auditioning. It was a lot of um, going through reels and seeing who was available, who wasn't available, and just looking through thousands and thousands of headshots. And you know, but. Um, I'm really happy with who who uh, who we ended up getting to to, uh, to fill out the cast. Yeah, that being said, no casting director would talk to us because we were <laughs> nobodies without a lot of money. We had to, you know, we had some entrepreneurial people who who really did a great job, you know, helping us to do that. We casted entirely over Zoom, so which was, you know, a new thing I think at that point in time in Hollywood. So it was, uh, as Ellie said, it was a very long, extensive process. But we also had to figure out, you know, an entrepreneurial way to do something when nobody was going to, you know, nobody was going to take us seriously at that time, because who were we? Well, then the, let, let's let's talk about the most uh, juiciest thing about about your film is this virtual world that you guys actually created. Uh, tell tell us the uh, the production process on creating this world. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess uh, I'm, I'm assuming you you had a you had a bunch of a uh, guys creating this uh, during the pandemic too at the same time no 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 no, no. Yeah, Justin, you, Justin, you take this <laughs> i'll take this one so uh, i we had no idea what we were doing i mean we we had the only reason it ended up being in vr you know was because we had to figure out how do all these people come together during a pandemic and we're like okay we'll do it in vr i had no idea um i bought an oculus i started playing games i started talking to anyone that i could Next thing I know, I'm looking for software packages. I'm figuring out how to do Unreal Engine. You know, the environments pretty much were purchased in the like marketplace on Unreal Engine. And, you know, I bought it. I ended up buying a couple mocap suits. I learned enough animation workflow to be dangerous. We're in my basement with Ellie in a mocap suit, me telling him what to do and capturing all these different characters and things. And then eventually we set out 30 something scenes that we really did ourselves. And then we found an animation company who then could do the lighting, clean it up, do the facial animation, really take it from, you know, the, the bubblegum and band-aids that we put the original animation together to and make it something that we could present on the screen. So it was, uh, it was definitely hacked together. Um, I don't think I would do it that way again. But at the time, we had, you know, like we had no idea how we were going to possibly get this done. We weren't we didn't have an animation studio and we couldn't have afforded really a real animation studio. We were fortunate to find someone who was able to take what we did and then really take it to the next level. So, so in reality, it's actually you guys uh, acting in that virtual world then. Yeah, it was mostly all of the scenes, um, except for a couple were Ellie acting. There were a couple, he was out of town where I was acting myself and recording it myself in my basement. And then there were a few, couple, like two or three scenes that we actually just asked the animation company to do themselves because we added them later on in the process. but. But the majority of it was um, Ellie acting out, um, you know, all the different roles. 
Ellie, you, you must have a quite an interesting experience on directing all this. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really fun and really challenging because most of the movie the actors are playing to to blank screens. So a lot of the cast members never met each other. So there are there are scenes between um, you know Sherry O'Terry and Nikki Howard where you know they have like such great chemistry and they're just riffing off each and they they've never met each other. <laughs> like, you know, so it was really challenging to um, to try to match performances performance to performance things that were shot weeks apart. Um, and Peter Gilroy who plays Roddy is just a master improviser, but improv is very difficult to cut together when you're playing off of some remembering what he did and then having people respond to his improv so stuff that wasn't in the script was was really challenging and then piecing it all together and cutting it was was really challenging but also really fun it was just like a massive jigsaw puzzle but um definitely an unconventional way to shoot a movie and uh something i would never do again <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it sounds like a sequel is not uh not quite possible at at this point for something like uh, i no, i wouldn't say yeah. that yeah we just have a different workflow knowing what we know now <laughs> well, i guess i guess you you'll have plenty of time to think about the pro process but uh but for the uh for the characters in the virtual world um so the, you said the um, you outsource it to someone else to uh, to to clean it up. Uh, tell tell us about the look of the characters because you know it's it's very basic. It's very sim like. Right. You know, like a, a lot of big budget movies are going to try to make it as real as possible. But you guys, keep right? It as so basic. there was a mixture. There was a mixture. So uh, originally, I made all the avatars except for the ones that were like Mixima ones. A lot of the extras, um, I were ones that were just kind of out there that are free to use. And I used a, um, a, a um, sort of crowd a scene generator, generator a crowd yeah. generator um, for, to, for all the extras and things like that. In terms of the, the main characters, um, I use tools that sort of you can, that help you to make it look like someone. And then I sort of modified it and tweaked it. But then sort of the, for the main, main characters, we did have the animation company kind of punch them up a little bit. So, you know, there were a few of the avatars that, you know, I didn't have any previous digital modeling skills. I was using software that was out there that kind of made it easier and playing around with it. So we did actually have some of them polished up and, and, and you know, a few of them, a couple of them were customized by other artists. But we, you know, I, most of them, we just started out with what we could do ourselves with the tools that were available. Most excellent. And um, these VR goggles, did, were, were they Oculus or were they, you guys actually had to create, create them? Because, because I noticed the how how different a lot of them are no i think they were all like proprietary some of them i think i mean because we had we had to use a bunch of them because for, for different characters um yeah i think some of them were just like proprietary like uh skeleton vr headsets um that didn't actually have any you know like electronics and then i think we used i think we used some oculus i think we used um i don't know yeah, yeah. here's a question for the props department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, um, I enjoyed this conversation. It's a very fun movie because I was laughing at uh, a lot of this stuff. And, and and like throughout the entire movie, I was going, what the heck is a French tugboat? But anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is the question. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it, is a, it is a question. And uh, and, let, and let's remind the uh, to the industry that uh, these are real actors, not A.I., so, <laughs> thank so, you that's true thank, thank you. you very much thank you very much really nice to meet you. you thank you thank you, thank you.